Okay, so beekeeping, can we, uh, can we make it pay? Well, a little bit about the presentation uh, first. Uh, I've modified it from um, a standard presentation that I do by the same name. It is considerably uh, different um, because I've modified it specifically with, uh, with next week's um, uh, discussion uh, forum uh, in mind. Uh, so basically, this is part one or two parts. I'm hoping that I can raise uh, quite a lot of points. Um, uh, practical ones, organisational ones from beekeeping point of view, and help or possible help that uh, Biba can uh, can give. And as I've already mentioned, um, really these will be the basis for discussion uh, next week in moving up the step to semi-commercial. There's gonna be five on the panel, all with uh, commercial experience um, at the sort of level that we're, we're talking about. Not, uh, not the large scale, what I call large scale commercial. Um, people. Um, uh, we'll also next week uh, probably be more on what Biba uh, are planning, but of course it depends on what questions are asked. Um, there will be no questions at the end, as uh, Richard mentioned, because what we're going to do is uh, any questions that do come in, please, please, please send them in as 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 I uh, as I go through. Please send them in because Richard will then take them and. Um, uh, they will be raised, uh, raised next week, um, and Richard will collate them. Any similar ones, obviously, he'll probably put together. <laughs> so a little bit about me, um, because um, I think it's probably quite important to uh, uh, to know a little bit about the uh, the presenter or or the person with the or with the experience, um, because it, it does take a little bit. Uh, more than perhaps the uh, uh, the ordinary person to be a uh, be a beekeeper, a commercial or semi-commercial beekeeper, you need to be positive. All sorts of things, uh, things like that. You can't really say mm, I'm not sure if I do that or not. So I was born uh, soon after uh, the end of uh, World War Two. So um, those who are anywhere near my age will know what make do and men means and also the value of things as well. And of course, that's something that's um, uh, been kicked into touch in, in recent years. I was brought up uh, on a farm and an engineer by trade. Therefore, I'm a, a very practical sort of person. Uh, a lot of things I do, I'm self-taught at. And the great thing is I can make, uh, make and repair things. I don't have to go and buy everything I need or get somebody else to do it, which, uh, which is, uh, is going to cost money. Uh, in beekeeping, you'll find there's you get um, a, a lot of problems thrown at you uh, by the bees, um, the uh, the weather conditions, uh, all sorts of things. You know, cattle get in a uh, a field or, or or in your apiary and knock the hives over. You've got to solve problems on the foot. You can't sort of get your phone out or go home on and uh, 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 and have a look online, that sort of thing. Um, you need to be a businessman. If you're or a businesswoman, business person, let's say, if you um, if you want to be a, a commercial, semi-commercial beekeeper, um, I started and ran my own engineering business. Um, had it going for 25 years, and we were, I think, pretty successful in a very, very difficult uh, sector. Uh, a lot of our competitors were coming and going, um, uh, like the change of weather. So a bit about my beekeeping, which is uh, everywhere I know, but just to remind you, I did start in 1963, as Richard uh, said. I ran about 130 colonies for, uh, for over 15 years. Now, <laughs> that 130 colonies is, is quite neat because it's probably um, mid-range of the group of beekeepers that, we're, that Biba are currently uh, looking at. Um, a lot of them, of course, will be very much lower uh, quantities than that, especially those that are just starting out on the, on, on the road. Now, if you run in that sort of number, quite frankly, they've got to pay um, because it is above the ordinary hobby uh, level, hobby and interest uh, level. Um, so um, you, you've got to find different ways of doing things. 
What I'm going to tell you this evening is what I actually learned. Now, I had no training, no teaching or anything. I just uh, picked things up uh, as I as I went. <clears throat> so what do you, the viewer, want? It's not only the people watching tonight, but those that are going to be watching on the, on the recordings as well. Is it simply just a zero-cost hobby? So you get your... Um, your cost back, um, perhaps a little bit more, uh, but not much, sort of break even. <clears throat> is it a bit of pin money, which could possibly be um, anyone with sort of 15, perhaps to 30 colonies, uh, something like that? Uh, is it to augment um, an income or a pension, perhaps retired early, um, want something to do? and um, have a little bit of an income, in which case it might be anywhere between 30 and perhaps 100 colonies, or somebody who's earning a living. Um, I warn you straight away, the number of people that are earning a living entirely out of bees in this country, uh, at one stage you could probably count them on two hands. Uh, I suspect it isn't much different um, these days. Um, yes, um, they might all be in beekeeping, but they've probably got other ways of making a living rather than directly from their own bees. <clears throat> I have to tell you that they are all possible. Uh, may need a very different appro approach for each one, um, obviously, because zero cost hobby is uh, different and uh, very different from uh, earning a, a living. But you also need to be a slightly different type of uh, person, beekeeper, than, uh, than, let's say, the ordinary person. But in reality, uh, over the years, the last 60 years, I've seen far more failures than uh, successes. <clears throat> a lot of people start up and they um, really haven't got um, a clue where they're going, what they're trying to do. Um, and there are many, many reasons, um, and of course they often result, or, or usually, usually result, in, in uh, dead colonies and abandoned uh, e equipment, which of course is, is a waste. Uh, now, talking about dead colonies, we're effectively, in fact we are legally, uh, looking at food producing animals, um, and people I'm afraid do things to, uh, to their bees, if they did them to... Uh, uh, a pig or sheep or um, or, or a cow, uh, they would probably get to get locked up for a very long time. However, I've seen an awful lot of wildlife being helped, mice, wax, moths, and all sorts of things like that, because of course, basically every uh, hive that dies out ends up with, uh, with with a mouse nest inside. So don't worry too much. Um, Biver is uh, hoping to help to uh, increase success, success rate of people just uh, just starting out and having uh, got uh, got in there and sort of reduce the uh, the uh, failure rate. <clears throat> so this evening, I'm aiming at beekeepers who are um, uh, probably out what I call it out and out amateurs, perhaps five colonies or less. Uh, and they uh, uh, and they want want to move up into the next uh, next sort of league, or perhaps those who already have. And as well as questions, um, if you've got any points that you want to make, uh, please let's have them because um, we all learn off each other, or most of the time we do. And um, you know, very often um, uh, some issues and some answers to, to problems are usually uh, so simple, a lot of people don't think of them. Now, I consider these people should be selling something quite regularly. So they've got uh, at least one uh, regular outlet, <clears throat> uh, probably even more. They will certainly have 10-ish colonies or more, perhaps many, many more. Um, difficult to put a figure on it. <clears throat> um, but for guidance only, Perhaps 200, might be 250. Um, that's, uh, that's the sort of uh, group that we are looking at. What well, one might term small-scale commercial, semi-commercial, call it what you like. I don't think we'll probably put a definition on it. Um, but that's the, that's the sort of end. We're, we're not into the, 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 the bigger commercial because, of course, there's a, another organisation that looks after them. 
This group that I'm talking about is largely unrepresented because when people want to move up, it's um, very unlikely that the local beekeeping association is going to have the uh, knowledge and expertise uh, and experience to be able to uh, help them. <clears throat> and as I've said on many occasions, I do come across many beekeeping associations that once uh, once a beekeeper has gone to their first year, after that, they're, they're, they're on their own. So it's, it's probably beyond most local beekeeping associations and too small for the, uh, for the bigger organisation that I've just uh, uh, hinted at. So I think there's quite a lot of beekeepers in this group that um, hopefully Biba can uh, help. Hence this webinar, which is really the sort of start, launch, call it what you like, of, um, uh, of a movement to try and help, help these people. And of course, uh, next week's uh, discussion um, uh, a forum, where we will probably be answering your questions and comments and that sort of thing. Uh, but also we may be introducing our own as well, because there's, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of experience there. So to be a, a semi-commercial uh, beekeeper, uh, you certainly need business sense. Um, I've known ever so many beekeepers just think, oh, it'd be great to have X number of hives, and they've got absolutely no business sense whatsoever. Got no idea where to pitch uh, uh, prices, got no idea how to, uh, to save time and money. Um, and, you know, they, they, they just fall apart, really, at the first hurdle. You clearly need common sense. Um, anybody who's heard me will, will, uh, will realise that I, I, uh, I call it gumption, which I know is an old-fashioned word, um, but I think probably uh, well, I've always used gumption, but you know what I mean. You, you, you need to be able to work things out uh, yourself um, very often on the hoof. You very definitely, in my view, need good beekeeping skills, uh, knowledge, and of course that they come with uh, with experience. You can't just go and read a book and um, uh, become a commercial beekeeper. Although probably in the last twelve months, I've probably come across three or four who um, uh, who who want to do that. Well, one of them wanted to do them on top bar hives because that's what I read on read online. Well, Bibber can probably help them, but it might be a bit uh, a bit of a challenge. You need a certain amount of urgency. If something needs doing today, you've got to do it today. Otherwise, especially if it's um, uh, something happening in, in, in a hive, if you're not careful, um, you get a phone call uh, from a neighbour. I've got bees in my chimney. Can you come and help? So you really do need to do things. You can't sort of, pack up uh, up past four or five o'clock, say that's it, um, uh, wash your hands and uh, uh, forget about it to nine o'clock in the morning um, because very often you can be working uh, quite long hours. <clears throat> you need lateral thinking as well. Um, I know I mentioned lateral thinking regarding the colony uh, very, very often. You look in a colony and you, you, you assess it and you say, well, so-and-so is going to happen two days' time, five days' time or whatever. You need to be able to, um, uh, to, uh, to do that for your whole operation. And it could be anything like perhaps the weather or, or some, something of that nature. Weather, weather forecast is bad for tomorrow afternoon. So you've got to, uh, got to juggle things to make sure that uh, uh, you get everything uh, done that needs to be done by tomorrow afternoon. Improvisation as well. And it could be something simple like a fence broken. Um, that um, uh, that a trees a trees come down, uh, knock fence down, um, and uh, the, there's a field of animals there. You you've got to try and sort things out when you're there. You need vision as well, because um, I don't know whether I was just lucky or not. Very often I was offered opportunities, and um, uh, the sort of things where you've got to make your mind up quickly and, and, and you've got to work it out. You know, is that, um, is that good for me? Can I handle it? Uh, is it going to be a benefit? Uh, is it going to fit in with what, with, with what I'm doing? Uh, physical strength 
uh, is quite important because it's it's no good taking supers off one at a time uh, when you're in commercial beekeeping uh, or semi-commercial beekeeping where you've got to save time. Um, you, you 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 really do need to be uh, quite strong and quite fit as uh, fit as well. You you can't sort of take um, uh, take a super off uh, one one frame at a time. You also need um, a bit of uh, non beekeeping ability too. You need to be able to promote your enterprise, whatever that is. Uh, let's call it a business, a fairly loose term. Even though you might only have ten colonies of bees and uh, and sell a couple hundred pound of honey a year at the moment, you need to be able to promote it one way or another. I'm not telling you how to how to do it. Um, you also need to be able to sell things. So um, uh, you go in and um, uh, have a chat to somebody. Uh, bear in mind that they always want it cheaper than you um, uh, you want to sell it for. Um, don't give in. Um, don't give special offers or anything like that. Stick to your guns. And if they're not, um, not going to play ball um, and give you the returns that you need, uh, then um, you may have to uh, think to yourself, mm, yeah, I'll go and find somebody else. And you sometimes need to deal with difficult people as well. Uh, the sort of people who are quite happy to tell you that they can get um, uh, uh, get get a jar of honey at the local supermarket or whatever for 80, uh, uh, 80 pence. Uh, well, then it's up to you to tell them, well, get it tested because it might not be honey. You know, you need to do, you need to deal with um, with uh, uh, people like that. Planning in beekeeping, I think, is incredibly uh, important. Even more so if you are um, uh, commercial, semi-commercial. Let, let's call everybody commercial uh, at the moment. Um, you need to be able to uh, reduce your costs. You need to make the best use of your time. You need to decide what you're going to sell because you've obviously got to sell something, otherwise it's hardly commercial. Is it going to be products? Is it going to be services? Uh, is it going to be both? Are you going to find something else that, um, uh, that, that, that you can sell? Uh, let's look a little bit further at some of them. But before then, Patterson, as you um, would expect, has got a philosophy. And that is money saved is better, is more value in my, in my book than uh, money gained. So try and save where you can. Don't overdo it. Otherwise, you could end up um, uh, causing yourself problems. Um, uh, an, uh, an example is uh, uh, at Whisper Green Teaching April, and I've, I know I've said this before, we've had some good dodent smokers for at least 15 years. And um, uh, there are some copies, as you know. Um, we bought some of those, and they were uh, uh, about half price, and two years they burnt through. So, of course, that is, um, that, that is, for, that is false economy. Waste in my book is expensive. So reduce your waste as well, and carelessness can be uh, as well. Damaging things, letting things get uh, wet, letting them rot. So, you know, look, look, look after what you've got. Well, let's just look now at reducing costs. Feeding can be uh, a major cost. Um, try to reduce it if you can. Uh, either buy your sugar at, um, at the best rate you can or an alternative if you do. I've never, ever used one of the, um, uh, the purpose-made uh, purpose feeds. But the key, in my view, is to uh, reduce the amount you have to feed anyway. And that could be relative to, uh, to your bees. I come across beekeepers and they're, they're feeding their bees uh, summer and winter. And we've seemed to have developed this, um, what I call a feed, feed, feed. And if, if you're in any, any doubt, feed again mentality in the last 15 years or so. Um, I, don't, um, uh, I don't have so much of an, a, a, an issue with my bees. Do you make or do you buy equipment? Um, well, have, if you decide to buy equipment, uh, do you go for second hand or new? Notice I'm not telling you what to do. Um, these are the sort of questions that you've got to ask yourself because every, everyone is different. Um, one thing I would suggest strongly is if you buy new, you go for the second, certainly hive parts. 
um, because um, they are made out of Western red cedar, uh, not uh, prime Canadian Western red cedar, uh, or premium, call it what you like, um, but it's, um, it's British grown, and it comes from sustainable uh, forests. Yes, there are a few knots in them, um, but it is Western red cedar. And if you look online, the uh, durability expectancy uh, of it from the uh, experts, if you keep it dry, um, okay, out, out in the weather, but don't let it be permanently damp, um, the expectancy is uh, 60 years. Now, that will last uh, uh, anyone. And at the Whisper Green Teaching Apri, we've got uh, some that are now 20 years old, and they're um, okay. They, um, uh, they've discoloured, um, but they, uh, they're still as sound as they were the day we, we, we made them. So I think seconds are incredibly good, uh, good value. Whatever you do, it needs to be value for money. But there's only you can work that out, uh, not me. I suggest only buying what you, uh, what you need of things like a, a foundation. Frames, perhaps, it's, um, it, it, it's no harm just getting a, a, a few extra packs, especially if you can get them on um, uh, at, at a good price. <clears throat> Looking after what you've got is in, very important because I do see some, some beekeepers and they just chuck things around and leave them there. And, um, of course, they, uh, they start to rot. Uh, when they are needed, um, of course, they're, 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 they're no good. And I've always taken the attitude to make repairs early because repairs always get worse and very often a, a, a nail or a screw uh, or a hole blocked up will uh, save problems, uh, bigger problems uh, later on. <clears throat> if you're making your own kit, um, here's some uh, supers I made. Now, it's, it's only pine, uh, but um, uh, uh, I made 80 supers for no cost for material because it was all from recycled wood, I had a neighbour at the time who made uh, stables and uh, they, uh, they had offcuts. Uh, okay, if you, if you want to take a plank and just put it through uh, machinery, uh, automatic machinery, it's a different kettle of fish than what I did, which is cut, cut, each, cut each bit up. Now, I slightly redesigned the uh, National uh, to uh, make it a lot easier to make. And I don't know how long that took uh, took me in hours, but as far as materials are concerned, it cost uh, cost me nothing. There's 12 nuke boxes there, also from recycled wood, and um, uh, they uh, 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 they the, they last almost forever. Here's one here, about 20 years old that I made. You can see it's out of um, uh, a plywood that I've, uh, I was uh, I was given. Uh, I think it's 18 millimeter shutter ply. And, uh, you know, they're, they're still as good as they, they, uh, they were made uh, 20 years ago. Litho, litho plate uh, for the roof and the wood for the roof was, uh, was made out of parts of, of a pallet. And if anybody, uh, any of you uh, know too much about me or not enough about me, I know I've got a couple of dogs uh, and they very often like to get in the picture. And I expect some of you spotted that one there. This is an Irish hive, and I know there are people who would turn their nose up at something like this, but this is actually quite a smart, um, uh, a, a smart thing. If you look at it, it's pretty well used. There's bits there that could probably be 20, 30, uh, or even more uh, years old. Single brood chamber colony, it's actually got a, a, um, a clearer board on. Uh, but four supers on there, so it's productive. Those two boxes are machine-made national. That one you can see is a homemade national. That one is a machine-made commercial. And that one is a homemade commercial, although where the roof is, I've got a suspicion it might actually be a, a brood box. Now, you look at that lot, 
And if somebody got that lot second hand, they could have been given it or picked it up for next to nothing. There could well be a hundred pound plus of honey in that hive. It probably didn't cost very much in um, uh, hive terms to put that lot together. But look at it in another way. How often are we told single brood jobs box? Oh, it isn't, it isn't big enough. Uh, not big enough for the queen in the summer or, or the, uh, the bees in the winter. Well, there's proof that at least in one instance, um, uh, that that's not the case. Also, I happen to know they're native bees, um, which, as we all know, are uh, AMM. And how many people say, "Oh, you can't, uh, you can't uh, be a commercial beekeeper with um, uh, uh, using AMM"? There's a number on that hive, 198, tends to suggest it's a commercial uh, beekeeper. So if people tell you things like that, challenge what you're told. And one of these days, some bright spark is going to write, write a book about things like that. Here's some WBC boxes. Don't count them because there's 16 there. Why am I showing you a photograph of um, 16 WBC boxes? Well, it's because I happen to have, have been the auctioneer at the West Sussex Beekeepers Association auction, which incidentally is to April 23rd this year. Um, and I've been the auctioneer for, uh, I'm told, over 30 years, although I do now share it with people. Um, this lot came in very late, and um, uh, I said to the vendor, I said, well, it, it's going to go right at the end of the sale. What happens if, um, uh, what happens if, I, could, if I can't sell it or nobody wants it? Oh, he said, do what you like with it. He said, set fire if you like. Uh, I, uh, I don't mind. I don't want them back. So that lot cost, uh, nobody else wanted them. So that lot cost me a pound because I thought I had to pay something for them. So what did I do with them? I converted them into national, just plinked around the outside. And uh, if you see live at the hive, you'll probably see some of those. And when we do live at the hive in the, in the summer, I will point some of them out to you. So, you know, it, you don't have to do these things, but it's surprising how cheap you can actually make your beekeeping without having a massive outlay. So I mentioned the auction. Uh, this is our auction at, um, at West Sussex. You can see the wide range of kit there. Um, I thought this um, photograph was appropriate because of the all the supers in the front. And uh, go along a bit further, 53 and 52 are two um, uh, commercial brew boxes. So if, if you look in the background, um, for, for commercial or semi-commercial, you can almost forget WBCs. Um, but there's, there's quite a lot of kit there. You know, you can pick it up at a reasonable price. But in general, uh, if people ask me uh, what reserves to put on, I generally say if it's machine that is factory made, about half catalogue uh, price. Uh, but if it's homemade, half of that again. So about 25% of catalogue. Uh, uh, price. What you do need to do is always trust the auctioneer. Um, saving money again. Um, there was a there was a hole in uh, in this box that the, uh, the bees could get get in and out, and so could the wasp. So nick it out, put a little block in. Takes a few minutes. Uh, that box is back up and running. But if you get something like this. Um, which uh, a lot of beekeepers have got. So bees, um, bees and wasps um, uh, come and go as they please. Get it sorted. Don't mess about. Okay, you might um, uh, you might leave it till the uh, to the winter, but there's a winter job. Sort it out because something like that, even if you've got to fill it up with grass or um, or um, uh, uh, propolis or a bit of sponge or even your handkerchief, do not really matter. It's all taking time. Time is money. <clears throat> this box, um, it's, I don't know how old it is. It could be probably 15 or 20 years old, but it still looks pretty sound. Somebody's put, the, put it straight on the ground and you can see it's been there for some time. Just because it's cedar doesn't mean to say cedar won't rot. This is some more commercial beekeepers' uh, apiary. Uh, look how somebody's um, uh, 
uh, uh, abuse that lot. I've just quickly gone through all that lot, and I counted up. I reckon there's nine brew boxes there and 11 supers, plus roofs, plus the floors, uh, plus coin excluders. I reckon if you bought all of that lot at sec the second rate, plus the frames, plus the foundation, you're looking at just over a £1,000. Um, now, a lot of people, if they, if they found a pound coin on the ground, they'd pick it up, wouldn't they? Seems daft to me. Um, once you've got your kit, uh, make sure that um, any chances of damage are reduced. So uh, in this instance, um, this is a plastic wrap round to prevent woodpecker damage in the, uh, in the winter. If you've got a little bit of damage in your combs, don't just chuck them out. Um, put, uh, this is a super comb, obviously, uh, and you, as you can see, an old one, very old one, in fact. Um, just put it on narrow spacing between uh, drawn uh, combs and the bees will, will, uh, will, um, will, will repair it for you. Make sure you keep your maintenance up to date because uh, something like this, quite frankly, just shouldn't even happen uh, outside. It shouldn't even be on a hive, but there were bees in there. Uh, a comb like that it clearly isn't much good. Whip it out and uh, put uh, um, um, put another good uh, good comb in. That is unproductive. Where's your time going to be spent? Well, managing colonies, obviously. If you're managing colonies, you are working your system um, to uh, to be be more efficient, or you should be to be uh, be more efficient. So managing colonies, so that's absolutely fine. Making, repairing, and modifying equipment will um, either save you money or it will help you do the job uh, better. So that's okay. We don't mind uh, doing that. Traveling is something which is essential but can be uh, reduced. So uh, don't keep doing the same journey or have too, too far between uh, apiaries. Uh, try, and, try and cut things down. Uh, not only is it cost, but I, I, I absolutely detest poking any more toxins into the atmosphere than, um, uh, than unnecessary. Uh, selling, if you don't sell in bulk, then obviously you need uh, outlets one way or another. So selling is going to be uh, uh, take up some of your time. Now, of course, you're going to be selling during the summer when, of course, you're going to be uh, flat out managing uh, your colonies. So you need to uh, be efficient there. Maintaining apiary soil. So it's usually is going to be in the winter. So you're digging out ditches, trimming back hedges, that sort of thing. Although occasionally, perhaps, um, uh, cutting a bit of grass is, uh, is, is necessary, but it is all, it is all needed. Mending fences, repairing gates, um, uh, uh, perhaps um, putting uh, preservative on hive stands, all sorts of things like that. You'll still probably spend time at meetings, even, even if it's a Zoom one like this. Um, or a video or whatever, <coughs> uh, a recording rather. Um, so you'll probably still spend time uh, at meetings uh, because, of course, depending on what you do, if you can't, if you do what I'm making one or two suggestions about later, you may well need to go to meetings to uh, uh, to sell a few things. You may well do uh, some reading, and of course, these days it's not just uh, a book that you might get from the library. It's um, it's going to be online uh, stuff as well. All these things take time, but things like that, do you actually uh, try to get an hourly rate back for it or not? Do you include it? Uh, it's entirely up to you. Um, that's, uh, um, that's your own business, really. So making the best use of your time. Reduce travelling where you uh, uh, possibly can. So distance between uh, eight breeze. Try and combine two or more things if you can. Um, I had a, a little bit of luck on one occasion where I had three eight breeze in a, um, uh, almost in a line. Um, uh, 
uh, three out eight priests rather, almost in a line. So I was driving, uh, I was driving to the first one, then on to the second one, then on to the third one, and then uh, and then driving all the way back home without seeing uh, uh, anything. Now I suppose I could have had an extra eight priests somewhere in between, uh, but of course it meant the others would have had to been um, a, a spread out a bit more. The Third April was uh, a fairly unfortunate situation that it was um, one of our Whisper Green uh, members said that I could put um, hives on their ground. And of course, it wasn't very long before it was, uh, oh, do you mind just having a look at our bees for us? I think there's something going wrong. In the end, I was doing their beekeeping for them. So I had to just politely pull out. But what I did was um, I found uh, another road round with circular route uh, round which um i uh, uh i found another two apri sites and also more importantly i found a couple of outlets uh one was a farm shop and the other was a village shop so um for roughly the same amount of um a, 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 a traveling distance and time uh it was only a couple of miles more what i what, what i did was i found an extra apri and um, and two uh, and two outlets. So have a look, see what you can see what you can do for uh, for those things. That's the sort of thing that you've got to be able to work out yourself. Um, Bibber can't help you, and neither can anybody else. Inspection time of colonies. Um, forget the usual three quarters now that a lot of people um, uh, take in the sort of am amateur situation. Uh, time is money. You really have got to get into a hive, find out what's right or wrong with it sort it out and then on to the next um when i had 130 colonies it was pre-varroa and um i used to reckon to uh, manage around about 12 colonies an hour these days with uh, with varroa and the resulting problems um i think probably 10 colonies an hour you ought to um you ought to be uh, aiming at on many occasions i've uh, handled 80 colonies a day and on some occasions, a uh, uh, hundred, depending on the length of the day, um, the, uh, the the colonies that I'm looking at, and um, uh, and those sort of things. <clears throat> Use simple management methods. Um, there's a lot of complicated stuff that's taught um, that you can um, uh, you can um, uh, you you can say goodbye to. Really, you've got to in order to. Um, uh, uh, to be efficient. I've got to tell you that you can't simply scale up what you're doing. Um, uh, uh, so if you've got this, say, three, four, five hours or whatever, if you want to get up to 15 or 20 uh, fairly quickly, you cannot carry on doing the same thing. Um, you've got to find much, much quicker ways of, uh, uh, of doing things. So it's cutting time, uh, inspection time down, uh, all sorts of things uh, uh, like that. Try new standardized or compatible equipment uh, if you can. Uh, now that might depend on uh, where you bought it. Of course, if you buy uh, new or standard secondhand stuff, it probably won't, um, uh, it won't be that much of a problem. But the last thing you want is um, is uh, 30 highs. Uh, so you've got a few nationals, a few WBCs, a couple of Smiths, um, uh, four, um, uh, four commercials and two Langstroths. Um, you, you, you know, you simply cannot um, do anything like that. If you are offered um, uh, hives of a different type, uh, you could probably manage if you had an, a, an apiary uh, with all the same uh, equipment. Um, I know there's somebody, well, I'm fairly certain there's somebody um, uh, watching now who's got um, uh, a Dayton's, a mixture of Dayton's and also um, uh, uh, pretty standard. But I believe they keep them in, in different apries. Shadow floors, I reckon, save you uh, quite a lot of time. Now, you obviously know that you, get, you have shallow floors and deep floors. I generally only use shallow floors. I've only got deep floors if they've 
if I've acquired them one, one way or another. Uh, but on, what I'm taking to doing is putting a bit of plywood inside uh, to uh, to make them uh, make them shallower. Uh, two reasons for that. One is that um, if you've only got an eight or nine millimeter high uh, rim around the edge of the floor, uh, mice can't get in. So you don't need mouse guards. I'm not saying it's reducing expense, but it's saved time uh, uh, putting them on. What it also saves, which I think is a great boon, is this um, uh, comb that you get underneath uh, frames. It completely eliminates that. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that um, if you want to put that in a, in, in a box above, uh, you've got to scrape it all off, um, and that, that, that takes time. But not only that, on many occasions, I've seen queen cells in there, which, 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 the, which the bees hide. Make sure you've got uh, suitable equipment. Of course, the honey extractor is, um, although you, you're not going to use it very much or, or many days a year, it is something you need to be um, uh, uh, be careful in, in selection. And depending on the number of hives you've got, um, you'll probably go to something like a nine frame radial uh, fairly early on. Well, a lot of people will go straight to a 20 frame radial after that. But it might be worth just considering if you keep your original nine frame radial and get another one. So you've got two, two, two extractors are going. One's going while you're filling the other one up. Uh, just think about things like that. You don't necessarily have to buy a thumping great big extractor because uh, everybody else does. And something that is, is rather amusing is that uh, I know a beekeeper who bought a great big gleaming 20 frame uh, radio extractor. And when it uh, got delivered, it was so big they couldn't get it through the door. So these things do happen. So, uh, so uh, 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 be careful. Um, Apries. Uh, get on an ordnance survey map or Google Maps or whatever. <coughs> Try to get them around about two to three uh, miles apart uh, as the fly crows, that is. Don't go on road uh, road links. Uh, but um, it's uh, Google Maps, I think, or Google Earth, rather, um, are, are, are quite useful for uh, for things like this. Make sure the access is, uh, is, is quite easy. You can drive right up to the bees. What you don't want to be doing is... Um, uh, uh, carrying supers uh, uh, over a stile, two barbed wire fences, uh, and, and a ditch to get at your bees. Um, it's all very well when they're empty, but they're a tiny bit heavier when they're uh, when they're full up. But on the other hand, be careful because if it's easy for you to get at, it could be easy for somebody else who thinks they got more right to your beehives than you have. Um, look at around about. 12 to 20 uh, uh, full colonies per apiary. Obviously, the more you can get, uh, the better. Now, I know there's a, a, a lot of stuff spoken and written about the number of colonies that you have per apiary, but it isn't quite as easy um, and as simple as, uh, simple as that because it's relevant to the prolificacy of the queen. If you've got very prolific uh, uh, colonies, Queen lays a lot of eggs, produces a lot of brood. Brood is incredibly hungry. The colony needs an, an awful lot more for um, uh, for maintenance purposes. Therefore, um, they uh, they need to get it either from the forage, their store, which happens to be your your um, your crop, or a feeder in um, uh, in a lot of cases. So that's why I say uh, twelve to twenty. Um, in any one site, you may well keep 12 non-prolific, oh, sorry, prolific colonies, and you might even get away with 20. Uh, my area of West Sussex is what I call fairly middling for uh, honey, but I had about 18 in each, um, in each apiary, and they, they all did fairly well. But if I'd had 18 uh, prolific uh, colonies, uh, I think I'd have had a lot less uh, honey. And of course, the um, 
uh, the other pollinating insects wouldn't have had very much uh, either. Make sure what you've got is secure um, for theft. Uh, vandalism is probably only going to be a problem uh, if you're fairly close to, um, uh, to uh, uh, a dense habitation. And of course, animals as well. Now, you can fence against animals, but uh, on a few occasions, I've had deer go in, rub against the hive. If you've got a good, strong hive stand, it's usually no problem. You, you might, might find it twisted a bit. But if you've got a flimsy uh, hive stand, uh, they can be tipped over. Here's a good site. Um, it's not mine. It's not a, a commercial beekeeper. Um, but I think that's really good because uh, it's, um, it, it's what I call dappled sun, sunshine. It's dappled sunlight. The bees are not being um, uh, 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 having sun blasted at them all day, all day long which definitely does, uh, does stress bees and I think causes them quite a lot of, uh, lot of harm. But that's a nice little site, that is. Now, you need good bees. Uh, good bees will mean uh, minimal uh, management. <coughs> minimal feeding, too. So um, all these um, NBU warnings you get... Um, during the summer now, uh, feed your bees, feed your bees, feed your bees. Reports coming in that bees are starving. I've only ever had a problem on one occasion. That was in 1976 when I, I did actually have 100 and some odd colonies at that, at that point. Uh, and that was a drought year when my area of West Sussex, which is wheel clay, just simply dried up and the, um, uh, and the plants just didn't secrete nectar. So of course there was nothing for the bees to uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to forage on. So uh, that's the only time I've ever fed during the um, uh, during the summer, apart from the odd odd, odd new, you know, which um, which is a different matter. So minimal feeding. You you should not be feeding bees during the summer. If you do, you've got a problem, either a poor area or you've got some bad bees. <clears throat> They need to be frugal as well, look after what they've got. Um, so not the sort of bees that um, when, the, uh, uh, when the summer forage is over, the queen still blast away, laying right into the winter, and you, you open the colony up in uh, November and December and still four or five uh, full frames of brood. You don't need bees like that because they're the ones that are going to uh, munch through your food um, very, very quickly. I think they need to be gentle. I know there's a business um, about um, uh, bad-tempered bees uh, collect most honey. Some of them do, but gentle bees can produce uh, a lot of honey as well. Um, and when I say gentle, I don't mean these soft yellow things that, um, that just um, uh, lay back and wait, wait to be fed, um, that you can um, handle without, um, without protection and the smoke. I don't mean those. I mean, good, sound, uh, honest, localish, uh, localish bees. Um, now, if they're gentle, um, they are a lot easier to handle. Need to be calm on the comb as well. Um, it's not particularly important, but um, if the bees run around, the queens always do. So, if you want to find a queen, uh, it makes it much more difficult. Not only that, on occasions. Um, I have seen runny colonies and the queens end up either in the feeder, if there is one on, or outside the hive. Uh, so, of course, you, 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 um, you, um, uh, you, you can lose the queen. Um, and again, calm on the comb, uh, that, uh, that reduces the, um, uh, the time. Low swarming, I think, is, is, is quite important. Um, uh, some bees, carniolans in particular, uh, despite what you might be told, um, uh, sometimes you've got a problem keeping them in the hive. Well, that's my experience anyway. Uh, they, they need to be healthy as well, so not, uh, uh, not fed with um, all sorts of medications and all sorts of um, uh, uh, things like that. And productive. Um, now, I know the production of a colony can um, uh, uh, 
can uh, can be aided by lots of different things. It's not necessarily the bees, but the key is, in my book, to in an apiary of 10, 15, 20 colonies or whatever you've got, um, obviously taking the history of the colony into account, it looks good in my book for them to have a similar crop. So, um, you know, if... if, if if, if they've got um, uh, supers on, let's say, they've all got sort of three or four supers at the same time. Not one got, uh, or some got one, some got two, some got three, some got four. That is a sign that either there's a problem with the bees or there's a problem with the uh, beekeeping. And uh, I, I think you can tell quite a bit about the beekeeper by just looking at the bees from a distance and um, and uh, uh, see, what, see what the beekeepers got. They need to be survivors. So you shouldn't be mollycoddling bees uh, just to keep them alive. Um, as, and of course, we come back to local adaptation. And um, I, I know it's beyond what I'm talking about today, but I've mentioned on several occasions that I've um, never seen yellow queens in a colony in the wild, a free living colony, that have lasted uh, over, uh, over winter, been there any, any length of time. If they're not going to survive in the wild, then the beekeeper has got to do something to, 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 to keep, them, keep them alive. Otherwise, you, it, um, it increases your losses. So they need to be locally adapted. So here's one of mine. Um, you do need good bees. <coughs> I suggest very strongly that you raise your own queens from the best ones that you've got. And we've got, we've got webinars and, and videos, and that sort of thing on that. So from good local stock, locally adapted stock, it's got a history of being, being there for um, a generation uh, or two, or, you know, several, several years. If they've been there sort of for at least three years with a little bit of history, I think you're going to be okay. And I expect probably next week uh, we'll be touching on uh, the Bibber National Bee Improvement uh, a program. Um, there should be information there that you can um, uh, you, you you can take. Now I'm going to get shot by some people here, but I've always used castellated spaces throughout my hives, uh, throughout my uh, um, uh, throughout my beekeeping uh, time uh, in all, all all my hives. I don't use uh, other spaces. I find them easier to use. Uh, they have got problems, but other, so, have, uh, so have other methods of spacing. But I do find them uh, quicker. And here's um, a, um, an example here. If that frame in the middle you want to take out for whatever reason, instead of just moving half of one side, half, uh, you know, the left-hand side or the right-hand side, all you do is just the frame either side, just lift out of the uh, slots, move them slightly away from the frame, rest them on the on the slot, and then you can take that frame out uh, uh, quite easily. It's very quick. You haven't got to move the uh, half the other, half the other uh, other frames uh, back and then um, uh, and um, uh, back out of the way. I mean, and then back to where they where they started from. So it's quicker. Records are, in my opinion, are very important because um, you you know what um, you know what was there last time, and unless you've got an incredibly good memory, it's uh, it's not going to be easy to um, uh, uh, to remember. So I won't bother too much about uh, uh, these. Yes, I will. I'll tell you what I do. Um, is the queen laying? Yes or no? Um, is a queen clipped and marked? Yes or no? Are there any queen cells? Yes or no? As an experienced beekeeper, that is all I need to know because all the other things that many people uh, record, all I got to do is just look at the colony and that will tell me. If it's building up or it's retarded or whatever, um, I, will, I will be able to spot that. That's, that's all I need. So um, that, that's quick. Um, now, the next three ones, three, are to do with characteristics of the colony. 
which if you're raising your own queens, in my opinion, are important. You can do a lot more than these if you like, um, but I just mark down temper and calmness and any of those who've heard any of my other presentations will know that I've got half my colonies in group A, which are the uh, better ones, and the other half in group B, which are the poorer ones, which I'm requeening. Re so all of that lot there is um, uh, is, uh, is useful. Um, the comments column on the right, then, you know, if you've, uh, if, uh, if something happened like, Send light chalk brood, or you removed all the seal queen cells, or whatever you can do. That I've ringed all those that are to do with characteristics, which I think should be recorded some way. You don't necessarily have to do what I do, but I think you need to um, uh, need to know which queens you're going to use uh, to raise other queens from, and probably more importantly which ones to replace. So although this isn't me, um, you, can, uh, you can fill it in at the hive and literally it doesn't take any more than 10 seconds. Uh, and what I do is keep it on a, in a, uh, a, 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 a document um, a wallet uh, on a clipboard under each um, hive roof. What is there, one pound fifties worth or whatever, you know, Mine are 20 years old or, or, or most of them. So there's, uh, there, there is no cost to them. What you don't need to do is write an essay, as you may do as a, an amateur beekeeper wanting to, move, uh, wanting to move up. It's important in my book that you clip and mark queens. Um, and I don't think I know any commercial semi-commercial beekeeper that doesn't uh or not personally um i've heard of some that don't but um if you don't it's gonna add considerably to your um uh, to your work so clip and mark queens and you really must use simple swarm control methods there's absolutely no good running 100 colonies with um uh, with artificial swarms, you, you just you, you just um, uh, uh, you'll, you'll you'll get rather stressed out. It's well worth putting bait hive in in each each apiary because occasionally, uh, against your will, um, a colony will swarm queen cell you missed or something something like that, or you misjudge the um, uh, misjudge the age of a queen cell or perhaps you were ill, all sorts of things like that. Well worth putting a bait hive out as much as anything um, to catch uh, other, uh, other people's swarms. And one of my apiaries was uh, in ancient woodland and uh, uh, there were bees in the trees and there were some brilliant bees. And I always, always used to get half a dozen uh, swarms each year and uh, they were really, really good bees. If you're using clearables, forget portal bee escapes. Um, you need to get a much quicker one. So you need fast, uh, fast, uh, uh, fast working clearables. Although I don't particularly like large feeders um, because I don't think it does um, uh, uh, bees much good. Um, of course, if you've got out apiaries, then you do need to cut your time down. So you've got to compromise one way or another. So. Um, you'll need some feeders that are large. Uh, these are what are now termed English feeders. Um, if you've got Miller or Ashforth feeders, plastic or wood, then um, uh, then that that is fine. But personally, at home, I prefer the smaller feeders. Uh, if you get into a semi-commercial situation, you'll probably get people who uh, want to help you to. Uh, improve their own learning that's absolutely fine but they mustn't be holding you up so if you're gonna have help uh, it really must be uh, must be helpful not nattering uh, not nattering away and um, uh, and being, being a nuisance so you need to be able to sell something otherwise you've already got a commercial enterprise well let's look at hive products first Honey is the obvious one that people come up with. <coughs> and uh, it's, it's quite rare that people 
um, uh, move up um, without honey being their major part, major part of it. You need to be look um, if you have it jarred. What sort of size are you going go, going to do? Or are you going to have multiple sizes? Are you going to produce a comb honey, of which um, I would suggest you only worry about cut comb or chunk. Forget sink, forget sections. Um, they are going to be very difficult to produce, as they always have been. Even round sections, some people have tried, and I've I've known failures. So um, uh, if you're in a, a heather district, of course, um, then you might decide that the um, uh, the uh, uh, the only honey you'll produce on the on there that will be comb, as I understand a lot of um, uh, heather heather producing uh, beekeepers do. Uh, if you're going to sell it yourself, try and have some distinctive labels. There's mine on the left. And uh, as a tiny story about that, I actually designed it uh, myself, did the drawing uh, myself. Cool, 30 years ago now, I think. But um, uh, one time in West Sussex, we had a, a honey festival. And um, somebody had the idea of putting um, uh, uh, two jars of honey in a class and getting a non-judge to uh, a non-honey judge uh, to judge it, a, uh, a store buyer, and uh, they got this chap uh, come along as a store buyer. And although I wasn't um, um, uh, a steward in that class, I overheard what he said. There were twenty-eight in the class, and he went straight for my um, my jar, and he said to the steward, "He said um, it, it's simple." It's just one color. It tells me immediately what um, uh, uh, what I um, what what I'm what I'm selling, uh, so people buying. And he said that's the one that immediately takes my eye. You have a look at that. But the one on the right, it's just one great big splodge, I think. And uh, uh, no disrespect to the designer, but it. it you know, you put it on a shelf and it could be uh, along with uh, anything else. So uh, these days with uh, 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 with uh, label software, you can you can produce your own uh, labels quite easily on uh, on computer and, uh, and 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 just an ordinary printer. So that's what I suggest at a, at a lowest level uh, you do. Um, I don't want to get uh, in any trouble from uh, anybody else in Bibber, but perhaps um, Bibber could produce a, a label or tamper, tamper label um, that um, that um, that could be a sort of sign of uh, a quality or belonging. Call it what you like, for perhaps for um, uh, marketing uh, purposes. I don't know. I'm not saying we're going to Bibber are going to. Um, but it is the sort of thing you could do, or perhaps your local association, or perhaps uh, several beekeepers together to in, in in a cooperative. So other hive products, obviously wax. Um, it is valuable, and I see so many people waste it. You could sell direct, or perhaps foundation uh, exchange, as a lot of beekeepers do. Um, if you think about it seriously, each hive should produce a better pound and a half of wax. If it's a full honey producing colony, should produce around a better pound and a half of wax per year, which is um, individually perhaps not very much. But you add it all up, uh, and even if it means that you get your foundation free, um, then, then, uh, the, then that's going to be a help. If you use it, I put some question marks on all of these candles, cosmetics, uh, polish. Uh, you can do if you want to. Um, you need to need to render it in some way. Here's a homemade solar wax extractor. Um, they're expensive to buy. This one was nice and cheap. And the guts of it is an uncapping tray, which are not recommended for use uh, anymore. So there's quite a lot of these um, uh, lying around, not being used, and you can easily make yourself a solar wax extractor out of uh, out of one of those few bits of wood and a uh, and uh, a double glaze uh, window. 
Here's uh, something nice and easy to make. Um, moisture blocks, moisture hearts. Um, all you need is uh, parts by weight, uh, coconut oil, one part of coconut oil, one part of sweet almond oil, one part of beeswax, just melt it all together. And all you need is a, um, a nice cube, um, a, a tray, and uh, away you go. Uh, and they come out like that. Uh, nice and easy. You clearly need um, to make sure there's, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it's filtered, obviously. Uh, but you put two or three, three of those in uh, in a bag. You might have to put a bit of ribbon on it or a fancy label or something like that. And um, I don't know how much to charge for those. But on next week's um, discussion uh, forum uh, on the panel, uh, we got Kevin Thorne. And he came to the demonstration where this, this was actually done. Now, I don't know if he's made, made these or not, but he will probably give us an idea how much you could charge for, um, uh, for, sell it, for, for, for selling these. Um, it, do people want to do food? Well, some do. Um, there's a uh, lady beekeeper, a commercial beekeeper in, uh, in North Wales, uh, and she does this sort, sort of stuff. So marmalade and jam, mustard, cakes, bread, biscuits, sweets, all sorts of things like that. But, of course, you uh, may have regulations. I've put question marks there because I don't personally know them because I don't, don't do it. But you need to, need to check up. What you have got, of course, is something that's, uh, that's perishable. Um, so you need to, need to uh, uh, deal with that and make sure you don't overproduce. But a great thing is it's adding value to whatever your your, your base uh, is. Uh, obviously, in most of these cases, it's um, uh, it's honey. Uh, but if honey is only 25% of it or 10% or whatever, uh, then, of course, you're adding value to it. All right, it's not all beekeeping, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's all worth doing. Whether you'd be able to do it in your own kitchen or perhaps... Um, get somebody else to make it outside and you just supply the honey. Uh, I don't know um, because I'm not involved with it, but I'm just, um, I'm just putting it forward as a suggestion. So what outlets you got? Well, obviously a home. That's probably where most people um, uh, start off. Uh, the sign at the garden gate. Uh, and then pay, perhaps people move on to farmers markets and shows but you've got to be present, so you've got to charge a top whack, otherwise you're not getting your hourly rate. Then there's other things like local shops, um, pubs. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of butchers throughout the country sell, uh, sell honey, so don't just think, oh, they're only meat, meat shop, um, because um, they, they could well be worth, uh, worth asking. Or perhaps sell in bulk. Um, well, of course, you haven't got any um, uh, a preparation, no jarring, no storing, uh, no concern about um, honey fermenting, uh, no labelling, uh, no shop uh, uh, phoning up 20 minutes after they've um, run out the last jar of honey and demanded something um, uh, this afternoon. No, nothing like that at all. What it does need is careful thought, and it's going to be dependent on your locality um, because if you're in a sparsely populated area you might have uh, different options open to you than if you're fairly fairly near an urban area if you are selling to somebody else you really must keep your supply up that's incredibly important a lot of people who set up um, uh, get their first year's crop and um, uh, come come find outlets probably sell it cheaper than they ought to to try and get in there. Back end of November, uh, they sold out. So you can completely forget all those that you worked hard to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to nurture. Perhaps sell at a show <coughs> like this stall, which happens to be uh, two of our uh, local beekeepers at Whisper Green. Uh, Looks very nice, and I'm very definitely not critical of them, but there's a lot of work there, uh, a huge amount of effort, lo loads of things, you know, the, the, there's biscuits, there's cakes, uh, there's polish, 
uh, all sorts of things like that. Candles, there, look. Um, uh, there's a lot of work in there. So I'm just asking the question, is it time uh, well spent? From I've, I've never really made candles uh, myself, but it seems to me that um, uh, it's, a, it's a very long-winded process. And no matter how much you charge for them, you still don't go to make any, any money. And although I can't remember too much of the details, I believe these two um, beekeepers had quite a bit of theft. You know, things disappeared off the corner of the uh, 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 table when when somebody uh, distracted um, uh, distracted the person on, on, on the stall. So um, you've got to be aware of those sort of things. But let's just look at other income. Well, you could be selling bees and queens, which a lot of people don't even think about. But it's quite feasible, quite easy to do. Um, managing other people's bees. Uh, there are more and more people doing that, corporate things. It, 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 it's wonderful for somebody's um, publicity to, um, uh, to have bees on the premises. Uh, perhaps selling equipment. Uh, less of a chance these days than there were 30 years ago because, of course, there's now much more online uh, selling from the uh, main suppliers that aren't, I think, anywhere near as many uh, local equipment sellers as, uh, as there used to be. Uh, perhaps be a bee inspector, and I know several people who, who are. I spoke to a bee inspector a couple of days ago. Um, uh, runs normally between 80 and 100 colonies of bees. Problem with that, of course, is uh, you're doing two jobs um, uh, at the busiest time of the year. Uh, what about teaching? Uh, there are some commercial or semi-commercial beekeepers who teach beekeeping to uh, beginners. Well, it does cut across what a lot of beekeeping associations are trying to do but on the other hand there are a lot of beekeeping associations who who um, are just throwing their hands up in the air and saying we don't want any more to do with it and and uh, effectively subcontracted out um, if that is the case then you need to think very carefully uh, what you do i guess insurance might be an issue that sort of thing which i'm very definitely not going to advise on but I can advise on selling bees because I know a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, I've even written a book about it, but um, uh, I'll let you work out which one that is. But I think there's, uh, there's options for selling bees. And when I had um, 130 colonies, I was selling quite a lot of nukes a year and quite a lot of queens as well. If you've got good stock, then there's no reason uh, why not. So producing bees and queens then, well, you can sell locally. I think um, Biba have helped create a market for you by the, um, um, by the work that's been done in the last few years. So that should create a, a, a need locally. Make sure it's, you've got locally adapted stock. Don't just buy some uh, imports, please, and propagate up because all you're going to get effectively is second generation imports. And um, uh, if you don't know what's likely to happen or, 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 or may happen, uh, just, uh, just read up on F2 aggression. What I'm fairly certain is you'll find a ready market. And there's one of the reasons that I suggested that you keep in with your local beekeeping association because once you get known, if they don't do um, uh, any selling of bees themselves to provide their own uh, beginners, they can uh, point people in, in, in your direction. So don't fall out with anyone. <coughs> what Biba can do is we can help and we can support um, uh, uh, beekeepers, and uh, we are more than happy to do it. Um, we're looking at setting up uh, some courses. There are two venues fixed already. Uh, we would like some more. So if you're in a position with probably eight or 10 colonies in an apiary and you'd be willing to let your apiary be used um, by good, um, uh, good handlers of bees, good sound 
handlers of bees, experienced beekeepers, uh, then, uh, then, then please let us know. Uh, there will be information on the Bibble website. There's nothing at the moment uh, because nothing is, is, is set up. But we're hoping to put up um, put courses together for people who are, uh, are either looking to move up, just have, or want to diverse, diversify, diversify into producing uh, bees and queens. So what we're hoping to do is produce national network of uh, local producers so that people, um, potential beekeepers, uh, know that what they're getting is suitable for their area and their queen, their colonies aren't headed by queens that were produced uh, 3,000 miles away. So beekeeping, uh, can we make it pay? Well, possibly. There's going to be more next week. In fact, a lot more, but it is going to um, uh, rely on you quite a bit. I've raised a lot of issues. Uh, yes, I've omitted uh, many more, and I'm sure people are going to say, oh, you didn't mention this, you didn't mention that, you didn't mention uh, something, um, uh, uh, something else. Um, I have done a few, uh, given a few uh, negatives. So I know it's not, um, not fashionable to give negatives, but I want to be absolutely honest with you. Uh, in any form of beekeeping, there are going to be uh, problems. There are going to be issues that you've got to deal with, uh, but that's, that is all part of, uh, of beekeeping. I haven't done it deliberately to, uh, uh, to discourage you. And I can assure you that Bibber, uh, Bibber wants to help. Certainly this group of, um, uh, uh, this group of uh, uh, beekeepers. Basically, what I've spoken about for the last hour or so uh, will be discussed, as I mentioned, by five uh, beekeepers uh, next week. Now, they've been very carefully selected um, because they, um, they've come from different areas. Uh, there's one from Cornwall, uh, one from fairly harsh climate in Wales, me from West Sussex, uh, one from uh, East Anglia, um, which of course has got um, uh, a different uh, agricultural um, uh, situation than the, than the rest of us, and uh, one from uh, further north uh, in, in Yorkshire. So please, 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 uh, let's have your comments and questions. And when I say comments, if you've just got a point to make, um, please make it. Uh, we may well uh, include it. Or, or expand on it or whatever. And uh, please let's have your questions and um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Is that okay, Richard? Excellent. Thank you very much, Roger. Oh, let me bring my microphone closer. Thank you very much for that. Um, always great to, uh, to hear uh, all those tips and tricks. I wish, uh, well, where were <laughs> you? Where were you when I bought the 20 frame uh, extractor? Uh, instead of uh, uh, pairing it with a with a similar size one, so that I could load one while one was spinning, and then yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah, I, I don't say it should be. Uh, you should do what I I, I do. You, you've actually got to think of your your situation. I think. Yeah, and as you say, it depends how much space you've got in your extraction room, but it's it's better than standing around and waiting for. Uh, for that, uh, that extract to finish uh, twirling around. Uh, as Roger mentioned, uh, we have got the NatBip uh, uh, flagship program. Uh, if you just Google NatBip or go onto the Bibber website, you'll find uh, our National Bee Improvement Program page there that's got the, the guide, the Facebook group, uh, the, the previous uh, NatBip news, um, lots and lots of helpful information about getting started uh, with uh, converting your... Uh, your, your bees and improving them, making the best that you possibly can. But uh, for now, we'll we'll leave it there. Uh, if you've got any questions for, for Roger from anything that he said this evening, please do uh, pop them on that, uh, that form so that they can be asked next week uh, to become part of that uh, discussion with, uh, with other commercial beekeepers. Yeah, I, I, I hope it isn't just a case of um, people expecting me to answer because um, there's a wealth of experience uh, with all the others. And um, I want them to get involved. It, it, it's not just my show, honest. Excellent. Roger, thank you very much. Um, just a quick reminder before we do go um, about the AGM. If you are a Bibber member, please, please, please don't leave it until the last minute to register for the, for the AGM. I have to... I, 
I have to manually check your email address against the members database. So please don't leave it until the last minute. So I would hate for anybody to uh, to be missed off. And some people are registering with email addresses we haven't got on file. Uh, so I have to chase those up. So don't leave it until the last minute. Um, again, if you uh, you follow the uh, the link in your email uh, to register for the AGM on Sunday, uh, and we'll see you there. Roger, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, good night.